Hello, you're watching Up New X, and today let's rant about a recently finished airing Chinese contemporary drama from late May to now. Really hasn't been that many good things going on in Chinese drama land. Still though, as someone who is so experienced in reviewing Chinese dramas, Up New X will always find a way to utilize even garbages. So today let's make fun of some crappy stuff and then get some laughter out of it. The lucky drama that gets honored with this treatment from Avenue X will be the recently finished airing on the platform Tencent drama Zhao Liangni, a date with the future led by Chen Weiting and Zhang Ruonan, a contemporary romantic drama of a journalist falling in love with a firefighter. Both professions in this drama will get decimated. I have only watched the first five episodes and decided not to click open any of the future episodes. When you take a bite of something and you realize it's rotten, you don't have to finish the whole plate to actually get that idea. The first thing that made it absolutely painful to watch is actually one of the supporting roles played by the actor Ren Hao. In the drama, some actors got dubbed, some actors used their own voices. For certain actors, they can't do it. For example, the male lead actor Chen Weiting, who is known for the ears he's been around in drama land that he cannot do Mandarin. He has such a heavy Cantonese accent that if he speaks himself, it will completely bring everybody out of the story. Therefore, he always gets stopped and I understand that and I accept certain actors from Hong Kong just can't quite do it. But Ren Hao is not a person like that. He's from mainland China. Wow, his Mandarin has such a strong accent, his regional accent, that makes him sound different from everybody else in this drama. And every time it's him talking, I'm out of the story. I want to somehow laugh. It starts to become a comedy and a bad one for me. If that's only the auditory suffering that I got from watching this drama, then the rest are visual pollutant and mental stress. Although we are still lucky to have something that can brighten our vision. Here comes Avenue X's first proper collaboration with the brand. Introducing Hip Optical based in US Florida. My long-term viewers probably have noticed since April, I've been wearing new pairs of glasses in my videos and those were the ones that I got locally in Winnipeg. The only problem with that is they're still a little bit too heavy for me. And I kid you not, I was thinking if I could get another pair that is as lightweight as possible, that would be great. Then a couple of days later, I got an email in my mailbox coming from Hip Optical saying, we would really like to collaborate with you. And I was like, okay, if you have really lightweighted glasses that can work for me, this is definitely worth looking into. So I ran through our ordering process with them just as a customer, got my glasses, and that's the pair I'm wearing today. It's really easy to purchase glasses from them. You just go to their website and then first pick the frames. They have many different designs on offer, mostly are environmental friendly acetate frame, but also metal frames. You pick the type of frame you want, and then you pick different lenses, such as single vision progressive. If you wear glasses, you know what they are. Then you can also pick different coatings. Within US, they ship for free. Then they also ship to Canada, Australia, Ireland, and UK at a shipping cost around $10. Once you've checked out, they will contact you asking you for details of prescription. Here, you can request free upgrade to thin your lens as thin as technology would allow. Then all you need to do is wait at home for it to ship to you. You have 30 days of money back guarantee. If you don't like it, within 30 days, you can send the glasses back. For every pair they sell on their website, they will also donate a pair for free. When the glasses come in, they are in this black box and does this Apple thing slowly slide off. It contains a lens wipe and then your glasses in this rather solid case. Very nice looking. Inside it's the velvet texture and their logo. So the pair I'm wearing now comes from them and it's really nice. And I told them my prescription on June the 1st and this thing actually got shipped out on the 2nd. Right now, if you use the link in the description box and also at the checkout, type in the discount code of new eggs. You can get a box of the 50 packs individual lens wipe that costs $20 on their website for free. And this offer will only last 30 days from the day this video goes out on June the 20th. So it will go to July the 20th. Now let's get back into ranting about visual pollutant. I'll talk mainly about two things. The first one is a very unprofessional depiction of the profession. Journalists and firefighters completely sacrifice the basic integrities of these professions for the sake of 
of telling a romantic story. For the poor journalist profession, our female lead character completely decimates it with everything she does that is totally unprofessional. Right from episode 1, you're gonna see her when the firefighters have clearly set up a boundary and saying the site is too dangerous, nobody is allowed to enter, she would still run into because her camera is left there. I don't think you can argue even that it is your responsibility to keep your equipment safe and get all the footages back when firefighters are telling you clearly there's danger of that site and if you enter something happens, we have to come in risking our lives to save you. It is your life, my life against a camera recorder and it's tape. Still though, she runs into the site, the firefighter has to follow her and then something explodes and he has to take out the fireproof blanket to hide both of them under that explosion of fire. And what do you think the camera crew, the directors decided to do with that scene? Slow-mo, romantic music while the fire is eating them up and they're looking at each other, pink bubbles under a fireproof blanket when there's an explosion. I was literally gobsmacked by the unprofessional actions of the female lead and why the drama decided to depict it in that stupid, tropey, Chinese drama land, only romance matters way. And that's only the beginning. Later you'll see a second iteration of this kind of action when there is a huge wasp hive and the firefighters come in trying to take it down. They set up also this area where you should not enter. She she insisted, no, I'm a journalist, therefore it's my job, I will just enter. She's an unprotected, completely holding her camera, walked right under the hive and what do you think will happen? She gets stunned and she gets even more pink bubble afterwards because the male character offered some kind of medical bomb to put on her stunned forehead and that makes her really happy and thinking the whole thing is really worthwhile to do. Other ridiculous plot includes later she would go undercover into a skincare product making factory based on a report she gets that they are doing things that are against the regulations. And once she got in and found proof of that, she's so dumb to the point that she wouldn't even bother to leave the vicinity. She was literally inside the factory in one of their workshop room, took out her phone directly and started to call and report to the health board. This is the factory that's doing this right now wrong and come in, get some people in, you know, like catch them in action. Obviously she gets found out and she gets chased to the roof and who is gonna come to rescue her? Firefighter male lead. Every action she takes in this drama is motivated by the fact that she wants this guy. She wants him to fall in love with her, she wants him to be hers. That's the only thing she cares about. Everything else can be sacrificed. I don't know how can you write a character like that in 2023. So in a second category of ridiculous things happening in this drama, let's concentrate on the female leads. Lian, I, now, a brain that's completely saturated with romantic infatuation. Quickly telling you what's the background story of these two leads. When she was a teenager, she was in a really bad earthquake. The building she was in completely collapsed on her and she got buried under. It was the male lead character who managed to find her and saved her. Ever since then, she developed this under extreme situations infatuation with this guy. Although apart from doing his job, pulling her out of the wreckage, he really didn't do anything else much more beyond what he is supposed to do. Still though, she's like imprinted on him. And at that point she decided no matter what happens in the future, I'm gonna grow up, I'm gonna find you, and then we're gonna be together. That makes a lot of sense. So for the next 10 years, she decided what she studies will eventually serve a purpose of working in close proximity to the male lead as a firefighter, which is a dog trainer, as rescue teams would also need to train dogs. And when they finally meet 10 years later, when she runs into that site where she's not supposed to and meet the guy, she's like, my prayer is finally answered so that everything I do from now on is to get him. Although the guy totally doesn't remember who she is and is quite weirded out by her advancement. She would chase his fire truck, trying to resurrect his memory of 10 years ago when they left, she was chasing their truck as well. She would inject herself into the fire station under the excuse that from her television station stuff, she's filming a documentary of the daily life of firefighters, voluntarily sit next to the guy when they're eating, picking food out of his plate with her chopsticks when they don't even know each other that well and the guy totally hasn't said anything about 
about I'm interested in you. That is so plainly stalker. Yet, because she is the lovely female lead character, it's romantic. The drama is trying to present that to you as a really lovely and cute thing to do. Can you imagine if they switch the gender and if it's a man doing that to a woman? It will be plain stalking and quite scary, but somehow, I don't know what's going on with Chinese drama writer. They think that writing a girl doing that to a guy is cute. She thinks somehow she got saved by this guy when she was a teenager and that means a special connection. And that's totally not making sense because that's his job. He saved many people. If he has to fall in love with everybody he's saved, even if he lives 10,000 years, it's not gonna be enough. Yet she's totally double standard in this thing. She is the only special one in this whole got saved relationship. There's another girl who shows up in the first five episodes when she actually also got saved by our male lead. And she comes in and showing that she's interesting him because he's good looking and our female lead will literally walk in blocking them and say he already has future family relatives which means herself so she's basically claiming him when he hasn't said anything about that and then she would took this girl to the side and educate her and preach to her the literal words would be you are someone who do not have your own opinion saving you is his firefighter job I was like, yeah, well, saving you is also his job. Why is this girl different than you? A woman who only lives for a man has no charisma attractiveness. You have to love yourself before you love someone else. Well, that applies to you too. And you're lecturing the other woman who has the same exact situation happening as you do, but somehow you are better. And it's totally valid that you fall in love with this guy because he saved you, but the other woman cannot do it. Completely not making sense double standard speech. I cannot believe I'm watching this thing unfolding in the 2023 airing contemporary Chinese drama. And to make the whole thing worse, to combine all the unprofessionalism, the love infatuated head, and just just like things not making any logical sense together. There's an epic scene in the first five episodes where there's the big fire of apartment building. Our male lead and his team got in and he got trapped inside and he's losing his oxygen and he is about to faint. Our female lead is a journalist, okay? And she happens to be close to that site. And without showing you any process of how did she know where he is and then he is completely trapped and he's in danger or how did she get equipped with a full firefighter gear? One thing, she's still under there as a journalist. And the next thing, the guy is trapped up in the building. Next thing, she shows up fully dressed, helmets, fireproof jackets, oxygen. And she just shows up. How can she just locate this guy by magic in the whole fire world and then grabbed him? <laughs> gave him oxygen and just saved him. And then the worst part is after saving him, they got onto this platform that's raised by a crane off the building, taking them down. <laughs> and there's water coming down, pouring on them, and romantic music start to happen. The lyrics start to get typed out on the screen, and they're hugging each other under the man-made waterfall while the f building of the apartment is burning right next to the water. So the water that's just coming down like a waterfall is not hitting on the fire. It is on them. If it's a daytime exterior shot, it would have rainbows already. And when I saw that happening, I'm like, this drama, I don't care what happens for the next 20, 30, whatever episodes, I'm not gonna watch any more of that. Every other second I spend watching it will be an insult to my intelligence and an insult to the profession of firefighters and journalists and every other profession this drama includes. <laughs> and also every firefighters in the firefighter team that the male lead works in. Whenever there's a scene of multiple people of this firefighter team sitting down or doing their chores in the fire station, doing whatever, feeding cats, the only thing they would be talking about is gossiping about the romantic relationship of their team leader, male lead, and the journalist girl. That's really based on real life. Hey, a group of 20 or so young guys sit together and chat about another guy's romantic relationship all the time. Shouldn't they be chatting about the latest game release? Sports? Boops. <laughs> This is another completely lifted in the air, not touching any ground, not even making logical sense. Romantic daydream infatuated story. When will we see a day when such types of productions cease to 
exist. That will be the end of this renting video from Avenue X. Hope you've had a good time listening to me talk about <laughs> The only thing that I can extract from crappy dramas, you know, like make it into a joke. And again, before I leave, if you need a new pair of glasses, make sure to check out that. I do get a small commission. I forgot to mention if people click through the link and then make a purchase on their website, but only honestly, if you need the glasses and you want to try out their services. That would be all. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.